What is up, my frosty brethren? My name is Arctic, and today I'm bringing you all my very first hero build breakdown. So exciting, so exciting for Paragon. It's a game that I'm working on. I want to share in a very similar style that I already do, uh, you know, my thoughts on how to build heroes. So I'm, I'm anticipating you guys seeing some very unorthodox stuff uh, on here. This is a very unorthodox build. Now, this particular game plan, playing a hybrid steel build with a deck that focuses on attack speed and damage. So it's more of a bruiser build than a tank build, uh, especially early in the game. I'm focusing on those things. And then it rounds out mid to late game with defense and cooldown reduction cards. Now, the primary focus of the build is to disrupt and harass the high damage dealing heroes like Twin Blast or Sparrow or Modoc, uh early during the laning phase. And the cooldown reduction and defense add some uh, meat to your abilities. Defense makes you a little bit more survivable. Steel is already uh, one of the most durable heroes in the game. And then the cooldown reduction, you guys will see, kind of offsets what I'm doing early game with jungling. So you'll notice that I'm frequently in and out of the jungle to help supplement my card XP leveling and grab buffs. I primarily focus on the blue buff when playing with this build because it regenerates mana and the cooldown reduction allows me to keep my abilities in a constant ready state, taking those uh, cooldowns a little bit down so that I can continue to do what Steel does best. So later in the game, the build provides disruption through the cooldown uh, cards, offsetting the blue buff, and uh, basically doing the same thing. One of Steel's major strengths as a hero is to be able to engage in combat and disrupt the enemy team through knockups, knockbacks, and provide your, your allies with a lot of support. So you knock an, an enemy up, you charge at them, knock them back towards your teammates, and your high uh, high damage dealing 80 carries on your team can clean them up. And in some cases, you can clean them up as well. So this ability uh, to do just that, be very disruptive in crowd control, is very important and vital to your team. And we'll get into uh, why that is with this gameplay that we got going right now. So immediately, the first thing that I do is check the enemy team's uh, team composition. We got a Rampage, Murdoch. Twin Blast, Mirio, and a Gideon. I'm actually going to, uh, when I go defense, uh, I'm going to scale for physical damage. So I'm going to choose the Tempered Plate here later in the game, uh, specifically for the Rampage and the Twin Blast. Uh, and right off the bat, you guys see I choose a Harvester Key, which is used to plant wells and the uh, or harvesters for jungling. And I grab a Health Potion because I'm going to be primarily jungling uh, during this game. So. Uh, within the first three minutes or so, you're not going to see me doing a lot of landing. If there was a big team fight or I saw something was happening around mid lane, I might hop in and, and help fight. But uh, I'm going to be pretty much MIA for action. I'm going to be planning harvesters and uh, basically getting these jungle camps for the first three minutes or so of the game. So I take the first camp that's near mid. Uh, and the reason I position myself right there is in case middle lane needs help, I can run over there right away because there's steps that lead up to it. And uh, then I fall back towards this uh, spot, this jungle camp that's kind of sitting right in the middle. And then I'm going to double back towards mid lane in case I need to help out in mid. Uh, and uh, the reason being, I don't really need to help right lane at all because there's two players over there. Uh, and so I focus really on the mid lane pushing towards that side. So it's, it's three minutes. We jumped ahead a little bit. I planted my harvester with that harvester key. Now, if you have a key, it's very important. If you have a key, it will plant a well in five seconds, five seconds. If you do not have a key, let me say that again. If you do not have a key, it will take about 30 seconds to plant a well. So I used my first charge on that other well, and then I immediately ran over to the other side, uh, the rep buff side jungle, and now I'm planting a well. You can see it's taking substantially longer to plant that harvester uh, right now. And, uh, and that's just because you have to go back to base in order to recharge your harvester key and then come back. Now, some uh, uh, cards have the ability to have multiple charges, so it keeps you in the jungle longer. So that's something to think about if you are interested in jungling and happen to get one of those cards. So we got a kill from BP Clutch over there, him and his teammate BP, I think, Fail or something like that is the other guy, Rampage, uh, uh, Grux combination, which is pretty fantastic. So you guys can see I'm taking this jungle camp here, getting myself some more card experience points before I engage on this Murdoch who's pushed up quite far. And uh, you guys are going to see my Twin Blast is there. I don't think he was quite ready. I probably should have called it out a little bit uh, harder there 
typed in chat before I, I pushed this. So you guys are going to see I'm going to use my charge, knock the, the Murdoch towards the Twin Blast. And you guys see he set up his shield. He's actually blocking the, uh, the Twin Blast there. And then he knocked me away. But I'm going to immediately uh, uh, engage in my travel mode so I can push around on this uh, backside. And he got his, but I cut him off those pursuit angles. And I tried so hard there to do another charge that would have knocked him into the jungle if I would have gotten that charge off and knocked him into the jungle, literally centimeters away from knocking him into the jungle, it would have been lights out for that Murdoch. And uh, we would be sitting at probably four card experience points right now. So I was a little disappointed with uh, that particular play because I thought it was going to be a great setup. We were going to get the kill there and I would be sitting at about uh, four uh, unspent points and I would have been pushing towards uh, getting seven but instead I only have four right now and I have to do some more collecting from those wells uh, that we planted just a bit ago so I'm gonna collect here and then I'm gonna head back over to uh, the blue side camps and uh, we're gonna collect from the harvester that I set up for uh, at about the three minute mark and then we're going to head back to uh, base and we're gonna spend those points on some of those damage cards that I talked about earlier. So, um, and the specific card that we're going to be purchasing is uh, Wind Carver Blade, which uh, has physical damage and attack speed. That means I can only plant and only place upgrade slots for physical damage and attack speed cards. So it's major kinetic, major strike, and kinetic. It equates to an eight point upgrade uh, slot total. So there was three points on the major kinetic, three points on the major strike, and two points on the kinetic. So you'll need eight unspent card points in order to go back and fully upgrade that card. So now you guys see I was jungling a little bit. We skipped ahead a little, and I ulted in on those two, that Muriel and the Gideon. Tried to throw a force shield so I could trap the Gideon in. Uh, the Muriel was taken out by our Sparrow, who immediately activated her ultimate when I came in for the gank. They ended up saying thanks for the gank there. Uh, so that was a great setup for the Sparrow. Again, steel so good at uh, supporting the carries of the game with his disruption and harassment of enemy players. We were able to push out that tower once we got that double. And uh, now I am back, heading over towards this Murdoch who is pushing our lane. He's, he ends up taking out the tower, but we are going to get him. He's pushing up pretty hard, trying to get this Twin Blast. I get a charge attack off. The Twin Blast is activated his ult. I end up getting the kill. Just too much damage for him to handle. And then we push out the left lane. So this happened very, very quickly. We got the ultimate gank in mid lane. And then we got another gank on left lane or bottom lane. And uh, it has me at 10 card points. Remember I, I said I needed eight card points in order to uh, fully upgrade that card, which I did when I went back. And now we're back in the jungle uh, once again, uh, farming that card experience points. And uh, we're getting set up for another big ultimate here. Third gank. This is happens all relatively quickly. I know we're doing a little bit of jumping around. We got the twin blast there. Uh, we were able to take him out see Sparrow again comboed my ultimate which stunned and knocked up three of their players there with uh, her ultimate and she was able to take out the twin blast again can't iterate enough on how important uh, the ganking are if you're going a hybrid build with steel being super disruptive uh, on the enemy team so I threw up a force shield then pushed this Gideon and we're going to pursue this because he is very very hurt I got a uh, knockback charge, which put him into the wall, and I was able to body block long enough to severely hurt him. And we got him right as he was about to get under tower uh, for that kill. So uh, it was a great pursuit. As soon as I threw up the force shield and saw he was kind of uh, lackadaisical in activating travel mode and getting away, I activated my travel mode, pushed right through my force shield and caught him off guard, and then I uh, was able to get a kill. So we're still in mid lane. There's a big team fight going on right now. This Gideon just... <laughs> Came in, tried to alt, got taken out. Now here is where steel is super important. Twin Blast activated this alt on our Sparrow. I heard it 
and instead of engaging with the Gideon who had his ultimate, I ran towards the Twin Blast and activated my charge. Now what's important about Steel is that because he has his ultimate and a charge ability, he is essentially the anti-Twin Blast. Twin Blast can be knocked out of his ultimate with a charge or a knockup, which uh, Steel has two. So you have basically two opportunities when you hear Twin Blast activate his ultimate to knock him out, which he completely nullifies uh, Twin Blast, who's one of the strongest characters uh, uh, when it comes to carries in the game with his abilities. So we are now scaling defense. I saw that Twin Blast wants to activate his ult. And again, the reason I did this is specifically for Twin Blast. So I have Greater Guard in there, uh, Guard and Health. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, uh, physically resisting uh, the damage, which Twin Blast is a physical damage hero. So uh, again, specifically catering towards Twin Blast with this Steel build uh, because I don't want him to blow up me and my teammates when I'm trying to disrupt him. So we got a big push here in mid. You guys will see I'm gonna alt in. We end up getting three there, and I'm going to knock the uh, Twin Blast towards our tower. He was able to dodge out of that, though. Uh, I did try. I tried my best to get some power damage in on him. He probably would have died had he gotten hit by it, but that was a great reaction time on his part to uh, immediately activate his tumble and throw himself out of uh, that tower radius. But that's one of the great things about... Um, you know, steel in general. I called out that I was going on Murdoch in this particular clip, so I ulted in on Murdoch, knocked him up, charged him out of the Muriel uh, save there. Muriel is able to grant shields with her ultimate. She was targeting uh, what looked like Murdoch, and I knocked her out uh, of being able to grant shields on him, uh, and uh, he didn't get any of that bonus, so we were able to take him out. We got the Grux ahead, and we're trying to clear out these minions as we push down this right tower, the second line tower. Uh, this is another team fight. This will be the second, I believe, of the game, uh, major team fight. And uh, you, you can see the stun there. This is a great combination with the these two teammates, this uh, Grux and Rampage. Rampage threw a, uh, his boulder to stun that Muriel, and then the Grux pulled the Muriel on the edge of the tower radius and they were able to kill him. So now is our big push. They only have two, we have four because we all called out pushing the right lane. And uh, you guys are gonna see, we're gonna take out this tower. That Grux is gonna kill the Twin Blast over on our right. And that's another tower down. I have nine unspent points. If you look in that bottom left hand corner, I'm gonna go back. And this is where I purchased my other Wind Carver blade to uh, stack it up. You guys see I put two major strikes in there and then a kinetic, which is attack speed. The strikes are physical damage. So uh, this is more of a damage now build. And I do have the attack speed. Again, just harassment here. And we're, we're now skipping a little towards the end. This is a play I wanted to show because it's particularly interesting. Alted in on the Murdoch. My rampage is super low. I throw up the force shield, which blocks projectiles. So he's aiming at the rampage but it's unable to hit him, and the Rampage just stays behind the Force Shield, and I was able to get the kill there. So I ulted in on that Twin Blast and Gideon there, win the final stretch of the game, charged back out. Muriel comes in with the shields on those two guys, and the Sparrow and myself are uh, in the middle lane just trying to uh, continue to let our minion waves push up while our Twin Blast over in left lane pushes down that inhibitor so we can get even more pressure. Uh, from our minion waves on this core. You see a Murdoch trying to uh, snipe us from up on this platform. I end up going for the pursuit. He tries to run away. We take out the inhibitor with that twin blast. And melee characters actually have, melee heroes have a uh, base movement speed that is slightly faster than the range character. So I was able to close that gap as he was trying to run away. He also was trying to turn and look to see if I was still chasing him. Our Sparrow focused on the Muriel, took him, her, her out, and then I focused on the Murdoch and then took him out. Jump ahead. They're now putting a lot of pressure on that core. I decided to shift my focus on the Twin Blast so we can't take out our Twin Blast and Sparrow. We end up getting him out and uh, the Twin Blast and Sparrow take out the core for the win. Now finish with five kills, zero deaths. Big stat line items here are the 12 assists and then the 2.6 thousand 
uh, points of collection. That's card XP here. And I finished with 51 card points. That's more than anyone uh, in the game. So uh, I was really, really focused on getting that jungle and card XP and helping out my teammates when I could. And that ultimately led to uh, more card points. I had 12 unspent points there at the end. So if it would have gone a little bit further, I could have scaled uh, even higher in a couple different areas. But I hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay. If you did, please make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you've not already for more breakdowns for Paragon. And until the next time, folks, I will catch you all later. Stay frosty. Did you enjoy this video? It was hot. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making this video. If you enjoyed this video, what do you, what do you think they should do? They should like and subscribe. Is that too much? I was, I was, you know, on a scale of like one to 10, that was probably like eight. You bring it down to a five. I was just five. Like and subscribe. That was like a, that was like a three. I got it. Like and subscribe, guys.